rocking out to the sounds of Black Rabbit on this extra raw episode of B-Side. I'm your host, Mike Flo, right here in Brooklyn and broadcasting worldwide. Let's go. So check this out. April 2017, I'm waiting on the L train at 14th Street. You guys are jamming. I take my phone out and I'm videoing and I'm showing folks and everything 
And then lo and behold, I hear you guys just take off. Explain that, that to me, like how did that happen? So basically we had been busking on the train for a while actually. And then we got on a train and we happened to have uh, New York Nico, he's like a blogger online. Right. And he came on the train and filmed us and it really just took off from there, from his page. Mm -hmm. It just shot to every other page that we knew of that was like well known online. Wow. Yeah. I hear it went viral, like 27 million views. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So first of all, salute to you. Thank you. 26 million views. What did that do for Black Rabbit? It allowed us, it allowed us the space to kind of uh, be a little bit more free with like recording and producing our own music. Mm -hmm. And then we were able to do a tour from that actually too. Awesome. Yeah. Where'd you guys tour? Um, just give me a few. All points. right, so we've been we've been all around the country pretty much. We went to Europe last month. Uh, where else were we? Wow. Guatemala. Awesome. We did Guatemala. Wow. Yeah, it's kind of wild. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you guys were saving up some money, see your mom in Puerto Rico, or something like that, and you you, you were able to raise the money in a few days? Oh yeah, that our, um, our, our mom, she she was working at an Airbnb in Puerto Rico uh -huh. um, about three or four years ago. And since my brother and I had studied Beatles songs a lot, we decided to just raise the money and uh, took us about two days to get round trip tickets from It was like Puerto 600 Rico bucks back. or something like, like that, I think. So, yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. So you get to Puerto Rico and then uh, well, we came home and worked crappy jobs for a long time <laughs> after that, actually. Yeah. And then we, we just thought to ourselves one day, we were like, let's do that thing that we were really good at. that Because <laughs> we were like working at a supermarket or something, which we're not, <laughs> which at least I'm not good at. So, <laughs> so I figured. Yeah. Um, you guys want to introduce the band? Yeah. We got Josh Lugo on bass. Woo <laughs> Patrick Sticks drums. On the drums, <laughs> Amiri, my clone on guitar, yeah. and uh, Justin on keys, and then yours truly on guitar too. <laughs> so being identical twins, um, I know there are a lot of things that you guys probably do without thinking, just unconsciously together. Yet at the same time, I'm sure there's some opposites or some things that he does that you'd never do or wish. Or, uh, how does that how does that play? I think that the most it comes out is like when we're busking, like our different approaches to busking. I like going on the train cars and being in everyone's faces yeah. and like just playing and having a captive audience like you're forced to listen to us play now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then Amiri likes to just be like chill and sit on the platform. Yeah, <laughs> like but we hours. got we got a lot of weird like twin questions growing up. Like, uh, if I pinch you right now, will your brother feel it? Oh my Stuff God. like that. <laughs> and it, it, I mean, and we're we're always like, you know, we'll say the same thing at the same time, but it's very random. Like people think we can control it, but we can't, sadly. <laughs> <laughs> now tell me about this um, Beatles video game that you guys got hooked up to. Oh yeah, our grandparents bought that for us when we were like 15. And um, we got really good at the game, like scarily good. <laughs> and, um, and eventually we decided to uh, teach ourselves guitar because we fell in, the, in love with the music so much. Yeah. So. Wow. So self-made, self-taught, you taught yourself how to play off of the Beatles video game? I yeah. tell you, man, anything is possible. <laughs> This is awesome. Uh, you grew up in um, what, um, Rockaway Beach? Well, we grew up in Bed-Stuy for Bed most of our lives. And then we moved out to Rockaway in high school. Ah. Yeah. Who surfs? <laughs> Our manager does. <laughs> Our manager. <laughs> well, yeah. Wow. Um, so how, how is your recording process? Like you guys are working um, on a new project, but 2017, you put out your first uh, Interstellar. Um, no, that was a self-titled EP, Black Rabbit. Oh. Yeah, so we put that out and uh, it was a lot of home recording. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we basically recorded it in our friend, um, in our drummer's uh, 
room like in his house right because everywhere else we would try to record they'd tell us to be quiet <laughs> <laughs> so we recorded there and uh but this next one that we're doing is a lot higher budget like cleaner mm -hmm. kind of sound yeah and is that that's a part of those 27 million views uh -huh. For that sure. takes you to higher level recordings. For sure. Yep. Right on. Mm -hmm. um, speaking of recordings, how do you, um, how would you explain your sound? Uh, crunchy, crust, <laughs> kind of crusty. Okay. <laughs> the first dreamy, two things that but come also to mind. dreamy and silky too. Not too much crunch. <laughs> Got it. Yeah. yeah. Um, psychedelic. -y. Psychedelic, yeah, psychedelic, melodic, dream pop. Yeah. Dream I love pop. it. Yeah. All right. Well, um, well, let's hear some more. All right, Let's get to it. For sure. guys come up with the name Black Rabbit? Um, actually, yeah, that was you know my that. idea. I was looking at, um, my grandfather uh, bought my mom this uh, Russian Black Rabbit doll that was like made of act like actual Black Rabbit fur. Oh, wow. It's a little morbid, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I was looking at that and um, one of my favorite, I put two and two together in my head, one of my favorite songs by Jefferson Airplane mm. is White Rabbit. Right, right. So I did just a little play on words there. Got it, got yeah. it. Um, why the spelling of black? 
any because the K is today. copyrighted. That's what we always <laughs> tell people. Uh, <laughs> that we ran into like some DJ or something on the train busking, and we were like, "We're called Black Rabbit." They were like, "No, I'm called Black Rabbit." And we were like, "Oh, <laughs> guess we got to remove that K." <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I bet you he didn't go uh, 26 million viral though. So yeah. <laughs> he'll catch up to you guys. Um, what is the inspiration behind? Uh, Interstellar, and what does that mean? What's the definition of that? Well, Interstellar, the title track on the song, on the album is called Stella. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, basically, like I wanted to take the album to like a grander place, a more epic kind of place than the EP was. Mm -hmm. And so I just, it kind of just evoked like imagery of outer space for me. I got it. Um, any inspirations, like, you know, I know you, you guys, um, listen to the Beatles, but, or Jefferson Airplane. Mm -hmm. Any more inspirations that kind of led to, you know, your sound today? Well, um, we've, got, uh, we've got inspirations from a lot of contemporaries, like uh, MGMT, Tori Moi, Tame Impala, uh, Temples, uh, a lot of indie, like, it, popular indie rock bands right now. Radiohead, so. too. We really Radiohead, we were big, big yeah, Radiohead fans. So. Cool. So. Um, obviously, you guys have known each other your whole life. No, I just met him last week. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the collective here, how, how long have you guys been rocking? How long have you guys known each other? Uh, what, five years now? I mean, we met Patrick like five years ago at an open mic, just right. by happenstance. We needed a drummer. He needed a band. Got it. And uh, we just rocked out on stage. And um, it just kind of clicked. We went through a few styles of music, different types of music, before we agreed on something. And then we met Josh a few years later. He was playing in his band. Actually, Josh and Justin, we met a few years later. They play in their own band called Monam. Nice. And uh, we all just had like similar music tastes, so we just felt like, all right, this makes sense. That's cool, man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so like, you guys were out on tour. Were you support acts or were you headlining? We've actually never been a support act on a tour I before. know that's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know that's right. Yeah. If you were a support act, give me three bands you'd love. And we, let's remove the support term out okay. of that. Okay. Name me three bands you would love to tour with. Um, Toro y Moi, Tame Impala, Unknown Mortal Orchestra. Why? Because they're, they all have really psychedelic sounds that kind of, I think, would mesh really well with us. Uh, and they're a huge inspiration for us, too. Flaming yeah. Lips, too, if you know them. Yeah. What does psychedelic mean to you? That's a perceptive term. It's, uh, well, I think anything that kind of, like, puts you in this uh, sort of ambient... Um, Dreamlike state. Dreamlike state. Anything that kind of makes you... It's, it's, it's a weird... It's a weird um, genre definitely to describe for me, like the feelings I go through when I hear psychedelic music. Yeah. It like, it feels like wonderment or something. You don't feel any specific emotion necessarily, but it's like just wonder and yeah, that kind of thing. That's kind of how people describe me. <laughs> <laughs> You're pretty psychedelic. Yeah, you know, <laughs> you know a little bit um, or a lot bit. If you weren't making music, you would be... Uh, <laughs> oh, man, that's hard. I know. I I'd probably you. be a marine biologist. Would, okay. That's always what I've wanted to do wow. since I was young. Yeah. Um, it's kind of the same. I'm, I'm, I'm not biting, but yeah, it's the same thing. Yeah. So you guys would be twin marine biologists? <laughs> yeah, we'd, just be, we'd just be in like a two-man yeah. submarine, a yellow submarine. That's a thing. Yeah. That's a thing. Yeah, you know. Let me ask you a question about the experience of busking on the train to being out just performing on the street. Did any of that experience translate to your live stage, touring, anything like that? I think it made us better performers. Because before, Mary and I were like obsessed with just production. And like, I think, I mean, we'd always like to be play in front of people, but I think it made us more comfortable just playing in front of other people and performing it still is yeah we're still like a, it's still a work in progress but yeah like we were obsessed with production up until that point i think more yeah i mean yeah. i feel like if you can do that in new york 
I mean, the rest of the world, you know, it's got to be cake. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's tough here. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. yeah. Um, let me hear some more, man. All right. I'm Absolutely. Jamming.
two, one, two, three, four. Some change about what's what's going on there. So for the Beatles music, usually um, since Amir and I have been busking for so long, I just play bass. Nice. That's usually we're just used to that. Yeah, exactly. So, awesome. Let me ask you: Have you been balancing the whole? You know, you were discovered playing Beatles tunes, and then maybe people expecting mm -hmm. you to only play Beatles tunes when you guys are a full functioning band of independent solo material. How are you managing that, if you are managing that? Well, yeah, actually on the first tour we did, like the first few stops, people just came and they were like, play Ticket to Ride. Like, <laughs> <laughs> they just expected us to be a Beatles cover band. I think someone wrote like some sort of angry review on Facebook about like, I came here expecting Beatles oh. and they played like psychedelic rock music and it was loud and blah, blah, blah. 
Like, we oh, got two stars on Google <laughs> reviews or something <laughs> yes. like for our first show. <laughs> oh, man. Um, but speaking of the Beatles, I hear you guys met Ringo and yeah. Yoko. Mm -hmm. um, so with that, can we expect some type of maybe Ringo or maybe Paul collab in the near future. That's, maybe. <laughs> that would, I'm my life would there. be complete. Yeah, man, I've got, I've got happens. Ringo on speed dial. I'll I'll, I'm putting that out there. <laughs> Whenever. <laughs> um, where do you guys see yourself in the next five years? Um, headlining Coachella. Hopefully. I know that's right. <laughs> yeah. 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 Exactly. Um, what about sonically? Um, more, more like electronic. We've been messing with more electronic sounds. So we're actually, we're like really into 80s music, mm -hmm. new wave, like Tears for Fears, Duran Duran. Well, like I love it. All that 80s stuff. So I love more it. stuff like that coming out. Can we expect some of that on the new project? Um, probably on the net, on the following. Got it. Yeah, yeah. we've got, we've a, still lot got a lot of rock left in us. So yeah. get it yeah. all out, man. Get, get it all out. Next all album time. will be yeah. less guitars, more synthesizers, and like wavy bass sounds and stuff like that. Got yeah. it. Yeah. All the greats, you know, incorporate fusion, and that's how they maintain their longevity. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? From Miles Davis uh, to Donald Byrd. I mean, I'm, I'm a jazz collector, so. But I know that's important, um, to, and it keeps you inspired as an artist. Yeah. Um, speaking of the future, do you see yourself staying in New York, or are you going West Coast, or? Oh man, when we when we went to L.A. to do the filming for Ellen DeGeneres, um, we were like, we went to what was it, Santa Monica. Uh -huh. Like Venice Beach, we fell in love, and baby. we just fell in love with it. We were like, "Yo, we want to move the whole band out here, like get like a big place." Tell Ellen to fly all out. Exactly. And up. I fell yeah. in love with New Orleans personally on our last tour. New Orleans was super okay, so amazing. we might be all around the country. <laughs> <then>. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'll just record um, through email or something. Like, like all, like all, you know, Kanye West and all of them do it nowadays. They just send each other tracks. Yeah, they don't even have to be in the studio at together all anymore. Yeah. It's all virtual. Yeah. You know, you speak of New Orleans. Um, you know, a great place for live music. I mean, you could do a Tuesday night there and make a salary, a year's salary. Mm -hmm. So, you know, but I'm sure you guys are going to be here, there. And everywhere. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a good remember, there's no, right there. that's a there's good no place. <laughs> there's no place like Brooklyn. Mm. Finish oh, this. Man. Finish this statement. This sentence. Brooklyn is the best. Yeah, <laughs> the go. best. Beautiful. Brooklyn is beautiful. Brooklyn <laughs> is. Um, <laughs> he stole my. He stole my answer. Because <laughs> you guys think alike. Yeah. <laughs> Great minds. Oh man, awesome. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, you, you, you mentioned this term, but I, I don't know if everyone understands the term. And we're not just speaking to just the Brooklyn uh, or the people in, in the audience here, or even me, but what is busking? Uh, busking is any type of street performance, uh, basically, where you're asking for donations. Like without a license or something yeah. like that? I mean, that... you can get a license, actually, believe it or not, in the subway. You can get, like, a permit. They hold, like, auditions yearly, which we missed. The But I, I sent in an audition, <laughs> and it wound up in my spam folder. Wow. So, like, a year later, I was like, oh, yeah. Oh, so and you, I'm you... still getting kicked out by cops. So, so you record yourself, yeah. you send it in. And then they tell you like yay or nay. They yeah. call well, you in they for call an audition. you for another in-person audition at Grand Central, I think. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who knows? About ten thousand people apply like every year. Wow. So it's a pretty long waiting list. And how long is does the um, I guess they they grant you the license to do that? Mm -hmm. how, is that for a year's term? Or how uh, long? It's forever. Forever. Oh wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I mean I know people who ha who got their licenses like 10, 15 years ago. And still rocking. Yeah, and they're still rocking in the subways. Last question about that. Yeah. Do you have to pay, look, I'm, I'm investigating it, right? <laughs> Do you have to pay taxes on that? No. 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 That's why it's awesome. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. Everyone should bust. I know everyone should. Um, let's get it. Let's go some more. All right, All right cool. <laughs>
and her good taste Make sure she values herself Not by the value of the lipstick on her face Spend your days on trending topics Making love in the nude in the outer space Material possession, but a good mind. Stay focused on this girl, leave all the others be. close my eyes and, and see myself at Rockaway Beach right there. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Is that where you guys are like now? Yeah. I mean, does that feel kind of like Malibu-y? Yeah, it does. You know what I mean? It does kind of feel Malibu beachy. Are you inspired by, you know, the, the difference from the hustle and bustle of, say, Bed-Stuy? Um, and then when you're out in Rockaway, does that inspire the music? I think so, at least at least a little bit. It definitely just has more of a chill vibe, and it kind of sets the tone to just create dreamy, chill, chillax music. Kind right. Of, yeah. Yeah. I love chillax. it. All right. 
Now brace yourself, I'm gonna ask you a couple questions and they may be a little off kilter, okay? Okay. okay? If you were doing a TED talk, it would be on? Um, hmm. um, I would say, well, I guess, like for me, um, I mean, there are a lot of TED talks that are like, go for what you want in life and like, right. just, you know, like, like fight through it even when the times are hard but like that would probably be the, the the center focus <laughs> of, of a TED talk if I was put on the spot to do it or to just push push like forward perseverance like kind of a motivational uh speech of some kind all right here's another have you ever learned anything on YouTube and if so what was that? Guitar. Um, <laughs> my, yeah, my, my, first, my first bass line uh, I ever learned was actually come together and learn that on YouTube. You learned that on YouTube yeah. from someone playing it yeah, or they some, had the notes? No, someone was playing it. Yeah, and they were just like, okay, this is a D and I had to like, figure all that out. You listen to hip hop? Oh yeah. Give me five, if you can, of your favorite MCs. Past, current. Um, Let's see, Far Side, ah. uh, Tribe. It's gonna be a lot of like classic. Oh, come on, I'm with classic. you. Diggable Planets, but then I also like Kanye West. Kanye, Kanye, Kanye is, is my favorite. I was like, Kanye's yeah. jam. Um, Kendrick, yeah. <laughs> Patrick cool. likes Logic a lot. Well, but um, so I was looking online, and 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 your boy Soldier Boy has got this <laughs> this beef with everybody, so maybe he'll beef with Black Rabbit. <laughs> and then that'll be another 46 yeah. million. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Any press is good press, yeah. basically. Yeah. Even yeah. if it's someone feuding with you. Apparently. I know, right? Do you have a, um, not, not from your own catalog, but do you have a favorite song that you guys have just grown up loving and it's still your favorite? Hmm. There are a lot of those. I know, that's a tough one. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite songs um, growing up was uh, Didn't You Know by Erica Badu. Ah, it's one yeah. of my favorite, like just the bass line. It's what I, re I think like when I started listening to like Erica Badu and also Stevie Wonder, that's when I started like really paying attention to music mm -hmm. and like what constructs like a good song. Do so. you have a dream collaboration list? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I'm listening. Let's see. I'd love to do a collab with... There's so many. I'm trying to pick one. I know, man. It's like... Um... Outside of me. <laughs> yeah, anybody else. Well, actually, Toro <laughs> Toro is one collab that we'd like to do. Uh -huh. Yeah, he actually... He actually reached out to us on Instagram and just congratulated us and said he really liked the EP that we recorded. Oh, that's awesome. And that was always, always a dude that we'd love to work with. I'd always like, I'd love to do a um, collab with either Kanye or Andre 3000. Ah, uh, I could definitely see the 3000. Yeah, yeah, 3000. <laughs> yeah. Um, what are your intentions? Do you set any specific intentions in making the music and you know, and and how do you want your fans or the listeners to feel when they are listening to Black Rabbit? Uh, preferably get them through like a dark or uh, a bad place in their lives. Like that's the most fulfilling thing to me is like, um, even when we've gone busking and people are, it's not even our own songs, but like when they come up, when people have come up to us and they say, hey, my son, um, my son was injured or something like that and and his favorite song was All My Lovin' or something. Like, I think that's like the most, that's probably the reason why we do it. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. And that could be in a TED Talk. Yeah. See how we inspire. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> Take us out with the last one. All right. Okay. <laughs>
But now I know I must set myself free Self-described as making wholesome, melodic, digestible, very intelligent, deep, and thought-provoking music, Beatles-inspired band Black Rabbit provided just that on this spirited and stimulating episode of B-Side. And I can't wait to hear more of their new, yet vintage sounds. So if you want to hear more on B-Side, check us out on our YouTube channel, peep our podcast on our SoundCloud channel, or simply come in and feel the sonic love up close and personal right here at Brick. I'm your host, Mike Flo, digging and finding nothing but jewels right here on B-Side. Peace.
<laughs> One thing I can tell, and I don't know if this is like Captain Obvious, that you guys are really in sync with each other. I know you as twins, we mentioned this early, we talked about this earlier, how you know you may be thinking the same thing or maybe even uh, completing a sentence or have the same aspirations and all that. When you're creating though, how does that come into play? Like if you guys are, are you picking the same chords? Are you thinking about the same tempos, BPMs? Like how, how is that, how does that happen? Um, I mean, it's a, it's a healthy balance between disagreeing and then agreeing to. Amiri and I usually like can tell when something sounds off. So mm -hmm. we'll, we'll kind of just like look at each other <laughs> when something sounds off. Right. Um, um, and then, but we also, we have like very similar music taste, obviously. So a lot of our, a lot of our songs kind of like blend in together. And it's always like when we're recording an album, it's like figuring out which one of our tastes kind of like blend really well right. to, to put on an album, to put on a body of music. Right. And then you guys bring that to the guys? Yeah. Right. Awesome, man. Um, any routines, since you guys are touring musicians now, uh, anything you do before you go on? That's just like your routine, a ritual. I have a cranberry. I have a, a cran. <laughs> nice. I have a cranberry vodka before a show. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's pretty nice. Is that in the rider? Huh? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's in my rider. I, I think it is actually. Carrots and yeah. uh, <laughs> drinks, because we're rabbits. <laughs> <laughs> On tour, it's important to get a lot of sleep in the car when you're driving over eight hours. True. Yeah. Between cities. True. It's, that's a very pre pre show. Ritual. <laughs> until like after the show, pretty much. Facts. <laughs> Where can we see you next? Um, so we're playing Cracker Barrel on Crane Barrel. Crane Barrel. <laughs> Cracker Barrel. <laughs> Cracker Barrel. <laughs> yeah, Crate and Barrel. That'll be cool though. <laughs> yeah, we're playing Cracker Barrel. No, Crane Barrel. <laughs> on uh, I believe Saturday. it is Saturday. Saturday. Crane Barrel Actually, um, and Saul on Broadway. Which one? Yeah. Um. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> right. That's why we have a manager. Nice. So we don't pl wind up at Cracker Barrel. Yeah. 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 There's a big difference. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> I want to thank y'all for coming out. Thank you for coming through B-Side and absolutely shredding it. So I want to give you a round of applause for Thanks. myself. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and and where can we check you out? Um, I know the fans, myself, I mean, where can we see you, follow you, follow your journeys, your tours? Instagram, Facebook, Give Black the Rabbit. Um, Black Usually, Rabbit Band. Black spell Rabbit that. Band. Spell uh, that. B-L-A-C Rabbit Band on Instagram. <laughs> and uh, that's kind of where we post the most, actually. And then we have a website, blackrabbit.com, B-L-A-C Rabbit.com. We got some new merchandise coming out this year, so t shirts right and check us out. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Black Rabbit. <laughs>